St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Betty Kadar from White Rock, British Columbia. This Mass is offered in gratitude to the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Holy Spirit for all the blessings they have bestowed on her and her sister. We know that this television Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land. And they join with me in thanking Betty Kadar in White Rock, BC for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We're celebrating the solemnity of Mary, the mother of God. Mary, of course, said yes to being the mother of the Savior, and then lived out that yes the rest of her life. We should be saying yes in all our thoughts, words, and deeds to God, we sometimes don't, though. So as we begin the Eucharist, let's ask forgiveness for our sins and selfishness, the ways we don't say yes and carry through with it uh, in our relationship with God. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now let us together praise God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. God our Father, may we always profit by the prayers of the Virgin Mother Mary, for you bring us life and salvation through Jesus Christ, her Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption to sonship, and because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer slave, but son, and if son, then also heir through God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at, the, at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. By the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be blotted out. I'd like to begin with a greeting of happy and holy near New Year to all those who are watching this Mass, from myself and from all the people who uh, put on the TV Mass. I'm going to give you a warning. There are two different homilies. I'll let you know when the second one starts. It's the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, a holy day of obligation, the last day of the octave of Christmas. On Christmas, we focused on Jesus, the newborn Savior. On Sunday, we particularly focused on the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And today, Mary is our focus, and her role in the history of salvation as the mother of Jesus the Savior, and our mother, and the mother of the church. And this is the greatest of all Mary's feasts. I suggest that our vocation, our role as Christians, can be stated in many ways. One way is to say that it's very much like Mary's role, in that we are to bear the word of God within us and give him forth to the world. God communicated himself to the Jews, his chosen people, through the law, through the prophets and other writers, and then definitively through Jesus. So Jesus is God's communication, or his word, and we refer to him as the living word. Mary bore the living word within her for nine months, and she gave birth, giving him to us, and giving him to and for all people. For us, from baptism on, we share the life of the Trinity. Thus, we bear the living word within us all our days, unless we're in the state of mortal sin. We should strive to make our share in the, in the life of the Trinity more intense, more intimate, and more abundant from day to day. This sharing of the divine life is important in our personal relationship with God, but we should also share it with others. We should be Jesus to others and find Jesus and respond to him in others in all kinds of ways, a few particular ways through the spiritual and corporal works of mercy and by things like choosing love over hate, choosing acceptance over judgment, and choosing reconciliation over conflict. That's the situation in regard to the living word of God. The same is true in regard to the written word of God, the scriptures or the Bible. As with the living word, the written word is not given to us just for ourselves. We should read it, ponder it, pray with and over it, love it, and live it out. If we live the written word of God, we're sharing it with others, along with its meaning and effects. So we are to show others the gospel and all the scriptures in action. Thus, we are to bear within ourselves and give forth to others the living word of God and the written word of God. Now we start the second homily. January 1st is also the World Day of Prayer for Peace has been since the 1960s. It was Pope Paul VI who declared it such. It's the first day of a new calendar year, so it conjures up changes, fresh start uh, resolutions. 
Connecting with Mary's feast, we think of her as the queen of peace. And in many appearances all through the centuries, she has uh, wanted people to pray and work for peace. So in the midst of a New Year's Day that includes parades and football games and special meals, we should find some time to pray, ponder, and discuss peace issues. Peace within ourselves, peace around us, and peace globally. It's one day of emphasis of prayer for peace, but it's the kind of thing that should happen on a regular basis in our lives. And it can lead to more prayer, thought, discussion, and action. A basic step is to accept the peace of Christ, peace only he can give, but he does offer it to us. We have to understand the peace of Christ does not say things won't go wrong, there won't be troubles, struggles, and difficulties. There will be, but he is there with us in the midst of it. So he helps us to bear with the turmoil, to overcome the spiritual and psychological effects of the troubles. When we offer each other the peace of Christ during Mass, we should realize just what we're doing. It's much more than a casual greeting or just than a recognition of each other's presence. It's a blessing, and we should be happy to give and receive it. All peace must start from within us and ripple out. We should work on our own attitudes and our relationships in regard to family, friends, and those with whom we deal. We should build up our sensitivity to those suffering in regard to peace. We should increase our prayers, make some specific efforts to bring about badly needed peace near and far, directly and indirectly. Perhaps we can help financially. Perhaps we can support groups that are uh, working for peace with things like letters and uh, going to meetings, petitions, that kind of thing. There is an anonymous saying that says, peace becomes more possible each time an individual roots out discord and hatred from his own heart, home, and community. And the Chinese have a proverb. If there is right in the soul, there will be beauty in the person. If there's beauty in the person, there will be harmony in the home. If there's harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. And if there's order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. So start within to deal with peace issues. Have a happy and peaceful 2011. Bear within you and give to others the written word of God, the scriptures, and the living word of God, Jesus. And now let us profess our beliefs in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself by sharing in our human life. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. 
God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all of my sins. Thanks. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, our Father, we celebrate at this season the beginning of our salvation. On this feast of Mary, the Mother of God, we ask that our salvation will be brought to its fulfillment. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we celebrate the motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, she became the virgin mother of your only son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is forever the light of the world. Through him, the choirs of angels and all the powers of heaven praise and worship your glory. May our voices blend with theirs as we join in their unending hymn. Amen. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbat, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venit in Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, and with all your saints we have done, uh, who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Let us pray with confidence to the Father, using the words that Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our brother gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace and unity. that it not bring me condemnation, but health and mind and in body. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not ready to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer by Henry Francis Light? Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks, and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. Let us pray. Father, as we proclaim the Virgin Mary to be the mother of Christ and the mother of the church, may our communion with her son bring us to salvation. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and joy of Jesus Christ to love and serve the Lord and all his family. Amen.
thanks to Betty Kadar from White Rock, British Columbia, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, we wish you a Happy New Year.